I have over 17,000 hours in Dota, and over this time, one of the most important skills I've developed isn't good last hitting or proper spell usage, it's how to watch and learn from replays. Back in the day, I was all about grinding MMR, playing non-stop, thinking more games meant faster improvement, but that's not exactly how it works. I learned that watching replays offers the perfect break from playing Dota while still giving you an opportunity to improve. Just like a good night's sleep is crucial for our brains to process and learn from the day's events, replay analysis serves a similar purpose, allowing your mind to re-examine your gameplay, understand the decisions you made, and internalize new lessons. I made a video a while ago going over a blog post from Seb where he gives a bunch of great advice for how to improve as a support, and one of his points was to watch replays. In that video, I told you to let me know if you want a video going over how to analyze replays, and you definitely let me know. So today, I'm going to share my extremely simplified replay analysis process that helps break down the task so much that the answers are basically right in front of you, and the improvement is inevitable. You might be wondering, how do I know which replays to watch? Or how do I know what to look for in replays? An easy place to start would be a game where you know you made some specific mistakes like bad warding or poor positioning in teamfights. These are great replays to watch. If you want to gain a deeper game understanding like which part of the map to play on or when to fight versus farm, this is where high rank players replays are useful. This is because high rank players like pros have some of the best game understanding, so you can watch what they do and be sure that they're making mostly the right plays. The key to successfully watching and learning from replays is to break things down into smaller, more manageable chunks. These will be our focus points. Trying to analyze a 30 to 40 plus minute Dota game can quickly become overwhelming or straight up boring. By defining focus points, we make sure we're only paying attention to certain parts of the game that we care about, eliminating distractions and greatly simplifying the process. Let's say I just played a game and I threw the lane by dying three times. This would be my focus point, the laning phase. Now instead of watching the whole replay, we only need to watch the first 8 minutes or so. Once I have a focus point, I start watching that part of the replay and I look to break things down even more by finding key moments within each focus point. Key moments are simply when something significant happens, like a kill, death, a close call. This depends on what your focus point is. An example might be, if my focus point was my spell usage, key moments I'd pay attention to are when I'm part of a kill, when I die, maybe small engagements or teamfights. Key moments are important because this is often where crucial decision making happens, meaning they'll often contain failures or successes. It's important to evaluate how you handle these situations so you can spot weak points in your gameplay or understanding. Now let's look at a simple example and I'll explain what to do once you found a key moment. Let's say I was this witch doctor and I'm watching my replay because I know I didn't play well in the lane. I'm watching through the focus point and notice a key moment where I get hooked by the enemy Pudge and almost died. Now what I do is ask myself three simple questions. What happened? Why did it happen? And what could have been better? Also, I'd suggest writing down some notes during this process so you can internalize your findings better and reference them later on. By answering these questions, we can identify an issue in a certain context, understand the reasoning for it, and come up with potential solutions. This process will help us if we ever find ourselves in a similar situation because we'll already have some ideas for what needs to be done. What happened? I got hooked and almost died. Why did it happen? I was standing in the open while harassing Phoenix, making this an easy hook for Pudge. What could have been better? Well, if I wanted to harass the enemies like this, I might want to consider playing closer to the creep so Pudge can't hook me. Also, maybe I could do better about not tunnel visioning on one enemy while harassing them. I should be sure to be aware of other potential threats. And that's it. I now have a couple of important notes to keep in mind that'll help me in future games. Be aware of my positioning, especially when the enemy has tools to punish bad positioning, and don't tunnel vision. Stay aware of other things going on around me. It's really that simple. Now I'd keep watching the replay, look for any more key moments that come up, and repeat the analysis process. By the time I finish reviewing all the focus points, I'll have a list of things that could be improved on, and I should be able to see if there were any reoccurring issues, then I can pay specific attention to improving those in my future games. Sometimes you might struggle with answering the last question, what could have been better? And that's okay, in fact that's what I would usually expect. The reason is because it relies a lot on your skill and experience. That being said, it's really important to try and find answers on your own. Practicing this will teach you to come up with different ideas and think critically about specific situations. But if you want to get a good answer for what could have been better, the best advice I'd give, and this is what I do very often, is to watch high ranked players replays and figure out what they do in similar situations. This is undoubtedly going to give you the best answer. 
what I would do is go to Dota 2 Pro Tracker, Strats, or youtube.com slash ZZ and subscribe. I mean, come on, why aren't you subscribed already? What are you doing? Or some similar website, find a high ranked player's replay, download and watch it, and carefully inspect what they do during the same focus points I had from my replay. When you do this, keep in mind the weak points you identified from your replay and notice how they handle those things better. They're basically teaching you exactly how something should be done. And in general, pay attention to their decision making during key moments and think about how their choices might differ from yours. This is an easy way to find weak points in your game understanding or reasoning. Wow, look at what this high rank player did. Did you see the way he walked over and clicked the like button on my video? Hey, maybe you can be as good as him if you do that too. Try it out. This whole concept of watching a high rank player's replay to learn is something that Ari, the 12k position 4 player for OG, emphasized to Grubby. I made a video going over some of the best tips he shared during this coaching session. Go check it out. By breaking down the arduous task of watching a replay into smaller, more accessible sections, I can clearly focus on one aspect of my gameplay to improve on. Find a focus point, find key moments within that focus point, answer the three questions, and answer them honestly. If you go into one of your replays looking for things to improve on, but you're not able to admit that you've made any mistakes, well, you're wasting your time. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments or in my Discord server. We're getting close to 500 members, so go, go, go! Go join it, go in the general Dota channel, and tag me saying GG well played. This will confuse all the noobs who didn't make it this far in the video. Also, I have an idea. Remember when I did a replay review for someone from our Discord? I was thinking maybe we could do some more of those, but not committing a whole video for it because that's pretty time consuming. Unless I find one that I think would be good for a video. This way I can do more of them. So you'd send me a replay with some notes, I'll review it and put together some notes on improving. Then we can chat about it if needed. I'm not committing to this yet. I mostly just want to see how interested people would be in this asynchronous type of coaching from me. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.